My ability to make a shot in basketball is highly dependent on my understanding of the strength and direction of the gravitational field. I know, for example, that if I were to make a shot at an angle, nothing but net, that only the component of velocity along the line of the gravitational field will actually be affected by gravity. By knowing this, I can adjust the strength and the angle of my shot in order to affect the time spent in the gravitational field of the ball. Well, electric field diagrams can show, show a picture of strength, but to be more accurate, we need to turn back to a little bit of what we understood with Newton's law of gravitation. Now, recall that Newton's law of gravitation says that the force due to gravity decreases with distance. Okay, we're picking up with this, with this G field again here. Okay, on your notes there. So Newton defined that the force due to gravity decreased with distance. How did it decrease with distance? Well, according to the universal law of gravitation, the force due to gravity decreased with distance proportional to the inverse square of the radius. So force due to gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. Well, we also know, according to Coulomb's law, Coulomb says that the electrostatic force decreases with distance as well. And how? Well, it decreases inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. Now, Newton's law of gravity, we can see this uh, easily enough when it comes to studying planets, separation distance, and the force due to gravity on satellites, and you know, doing moon missions when they, when they shot capsules to the moon. This is what was seen. Hard to see it real close to the Earth, but we have seen this when we look at those types of applications. This is a little bit more difficult to show, but nonetheless, I do have a pretty cool demonstration that illustrates the fact that there is a difference in the force as it decreases with distance. Now, this right here, I'm going, I'm going to talk us through this demonstration, and then I'm going to turn the lights out and let you see what happens. This is nothing more than a fluorescent tube. It goes into like an aquarium or something like that. But as we charge this up, we can show that this light bulb will actually light up in this orientation, but it will not light up in this orientation as readily. There might be a discharge here and there that would cause it to light, but it's not going to light as continuous in this orientation as it will in this. Why is that? It's a real simple reason that this almost bridges this lesson with the next lesson, this demonstration here. The distance between this end of the tube right here, there's gas particles in here, and there's going to be a, a real strong electric field generated by the Van de Graaff generator. Now, because of the gas molecules on this end being closer to the tube than the gas molecules on this end, these charges will experience an electrostatic force due to this Van de Graaff generator that is stronger on this end of the tube than it is on this end of the tube. So a stronger force here than a, and a weaker force here. What's the outcome of that? The outcome is you have a strong and a weak. That means there's going to be a net force present. Well, if there's a net force present, then those charges will accelerate in a specific direction. And we can say that the electric force is then doing work. And that work means that there is a transfer of energy in the process of movement. And that transfer of energy shows itself as light within the tube. Now, if I were to hold the tube like this, we are now having this tube equidistant from the ends of the light. 
that means that the force on the charges on this portion of the tube, based on this distance, is one value, and the force acting on the particles in this portion of the tube is at the same value. Why? Because they're at the same distance. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now that I am grounded by standing on the floor, so there might be a discharge here and there, and you might see the tube light up. But if I hold it in this position, it will maintain its lighting. If I hold it in this position, you'll get a discharge here and there because I am probably not able to keep these two distances exactly equidistant from each other. Okay, let's uh, turn off the lights and fire up the generator and let's see this tube light up as a reflection of how the force varies pro inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating these two ends from the Van de Graaff generator.